Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans, and I've got an interview today with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, a fascinating interview. I'd like for you to know, though, before we go into that interview, about the conference we have coming up on September the 17th. Uh, it is an end-time prophecy conference, the Tipping Point Prophecy Conference, from 9 a.m. in the morning till 5.30 in the afternoon, right here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex at Fellowship Church. Pastor Ed Young, wonderful pastor there, and he's going to be hosting us all day long. Myself, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, Dr. Mark Hitchcock, Billy Crone, uh, Greg Laurie. We, we have a great lineup that day. We're also having a question and answer session. And so it's going to be a great conference. You have a discount code there on your screen. that You can have a 20% discount if you just go on conference.endtime.com, enter your promo code there. You can buy as many tickets as you want with your discount. Bring family, friends, a group from your church. We would love to have you, but it's coming up quick. September 17th, so get online and register. We would love to see you there. Well, it's my great honor today to introduce Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. He's joining me today to talk about his book, Harbinger 2. And I introduce him as being, I believe, the most profound prophetic voice we have in the world today. And I'm, I don't think that's a stretch. He's written many New York Times bestselling books, beginning with The Harbinger. And he leads Hope of the World Ministry. It's an international outreach of teaching, evangelism, and compassion to people all over the world, the most needy people all over the world. He also leads Jerusalem Center, Beth Israel, a worship center made up of Jews and Gentiles just outside of New York City in Wayne, New Jersey. Rabbi, thank you for joining me today. Great to be with you, Jimmy, always. Now, you, your books are just off the charts. I mean, and I, I've read all of them. I, I mean, uh, I believe it was the book, The Paradigm, that just absolutely freaked me out that, you know, just looking at the parallels of today, going back to the nation of Israel, it's absolutely astounding. In your book, The Harbinger is how it all started. But uh, I, I woke up one morning and in the middle of the night and I saw you on TV and I called you and I came to New York City and we went to all the different places, Ground Zero and to the churches and all the different places where uh, The Harbinger took place. And you were pointing out, as you did in your book and also the movie, you're talking about this is this is what happened when God when God judged Israel, but now it's happening again on American soil. But now you've written Harbinger too. So talk for just a minute about what what led you to write another the sequel to Harbinger. Yeah, well, I always knew that there would be a sequel because when I wrote the Harbinger, the Harbinger is for those who don't know is about the beginning of national judgment, the warning, the, the first strike on the land, that, that pattern that God gives in the Bible when he is warning a nation that is heading for judgment. And so, you know, in the beginning with 9-11, and it, so I knew it was the beginning, that, that scripture, Isaiah 9-10, which is the Harbinger scripture, which is when the strike comes on the land, that first warning strike, that happens years before the nation's judgment. It's the warning. It's the mercy of God trying to wake them up. So when 9-11 happened and, you know, I, and I, when I wrote The Harbinger, I knew that it was not the end of the template or the mystery. It was the beginning. So there would, that there would come a day that there would be a sequel. Now, this is something that I could not, I could not, you know, you can't just, I can't decide I'm going to write a sequel to The Harbinger. It's got to be things are happening. It's got to be the right time. So I kind of put this off. I always knew there was going to be the Harbinger too, but I but I was never going to touch it until the time. And then what happened, Jimmy, is that that in 2019, I'm praying for what the next book is, and I have in my mind like three books I'm thinking of. And so I'm saying, Lord, which is it? And I and I got back none of them. It's this is the time that you are going to write the Harbinger too, and because and this is the this is the this is like autumn of 2019, because the year that's coming, 2020, is going to be the beginning of shakings on America, um, and that it's gonna be the continuation of the harbinger, what began with the harbinger, and you have to write this because God's people need to need to know, and you need to warn, and you need to let them know what's happening. So what happened was, uh, at the beginning of 2020, I went down to my publisher, Charisma, and I said, listen, this is what I got. I gotta start writing the harbinger too. I started writing in January. Within about two and a half months, the shakings began. Oh, yeah. Start with the the major one, of course, being the plague that came upon the land. COVID nineteen comes on, and then all the shakings. We're still in those shakings today. But I started writing before it happened because of what I got very strongly from the Lord uh, just before the year began. Well, we're we're. I mean, it's amazing 
what's happening in the world right now because you, you write in the Harbinger, it's the beginning of judgment. So that was 21 years ago. That was, what, three Shemitahs ago. And so now you talk about judgment on the land. Our economy is under judgment. Our nation is under judgment. We also see the shortages, all of the things that are happening right now. It's amazing. I can't yeah. believe that I live in this America. I can't believe I live in a country where the shelves are bare for people with a baby formula shortage and all that stuff. This is part of the judgment, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing. And, and, you know, no one, it's like some of this, people can't even explain it. Why are, why are the shelves bare? Why are we having all these shortages? Why is it that, that no matter what, I mean, the, the, Inflation is out of out of you know out of bounds. We're no matter what they're doing, everything just suddenly you know just collapsing. And even the you know even the our society, you know that that when you look at the majority of Republicans believe there's going to be a civil war. Almost or around a majority of Democrats also believe there's going to be a civil war. Amer America's breaking down, breaking apart. Um, things are happening that we could have never imagined. I mean, morally, spiritually, it is all followed this template. See, we, we mentioned on one of the shows we did um, that on the day after 9-11 that this the scripture, the Harbinger scripture, Isaiah 9 10, was proclaimed to the world from Capitol Hill. Now, now here's the significance. This is Tom Daschle. I mentioned it on the last program. Yeah. Um, but this is the significance. What he was saying, this scripture is not just about the signs that would appear. All those nine harbingers that appeared in the land are exact, but it's not just about that. It's about the nation itself saying, We're, I'm not coming back to you, God. We are going away from you. We are, you, you know, look at all the commentaries on Isaiah 9 10 from centuries past. And they'll say, This is a nation that was warned by God, but then it turned away. It actually hardened itself and got worse. So what happened is actually Tom Daschle, when he made that, that prophetic uh, word without knowing what he was doing, just like Caiaphas did. He was actually prophesying that America was actually not coming back, and, and yeah, you know, we can we pray that this changes, but was going to actually continue and actually harden itself more, become more brazen and defy God. So if we were walking away from God in 9/11, and even even then it was obviously you know most believers knew it, and they even took 9/11 as a wake up call, you know, because we were we were departing from God. But if we were departing then, we are racing now. And so we are following the exact template. We're doing exactly what ancient Israel did. We, if you look at where we, we've gotten worse, not better. You know, right after 9-11, it looked like there could have been revival. Yeah. People were, were flocking to churches and we were hoping like there could have been. You know, it shows you the what could happen. But you know what? There was no revival because there was no repentance. That's right. If you, without repentance, there's no revival. And let, we didn't change the course. In fact, we got worse. So that's where we are now. And now, and so it's, the thing is, the is we are following the exact template of the harbingers. It has not stopped. Well, the, in ancient Israel, it was amazing that they had the god of Molech that they worshiped. Solomon even built an altar to Molech where they uh, sacrificed infants. And all of the detestable things, they were called the detestable idols, and the, the things that they did. And you look back at that and you say, well, how could people do that? We're doing it today. With yeah. abortion, there's even laws on the books to give people the opportunity to abort, to kill a child 30 days after they're born. Uh, but what's happening in the trans thing, uh, in Florida they passed this law that said it's illegal to teach kindergarten through third grade about gender and sex. Because what kindergarten through third grader even thinks about right. stuff like that? Right. They believe in Santa Claus. They believe in the Easter Bunny. They believe right. in the Tooth Fairy. If you tell them something, they're going to probably going to believe it. Yeah. And so you don't want impressionable young children being indoctrinated. And so it was a phenomenal law, and that Governor DeSantis passed. The President of the United States called it evil. Yeah. He said it's evil to keep those kindergarten through third grade from being taught about gender and sexuality indoctrinating them that you could be a different sex. And many of the schools, Rabbi, are doing this without the parents' permission. And you're seeing parents all over the country up in arms going to school board meetings because of basically pornography, filth, uh, the critical race theory, all these things being indoctrinated into our children. Literally, they're trying to take the children away from the parents. And so I never thought I would live in this kind of a mm. society. And when you sounded the alarm in the Harbinger, that was just the beginning. Yeah. And it's like we were innocent back then compared to now. Okay. I mean, it, that was like a different day and time. Yeah. 
and obviously yeah. we were in sin, but the, the, the warnings began and now yeah. we see a hardening of hearts. I, I want you to talk about some of the unrevealed mysteries yeah. in your book, Mystery of the Pentagon. Yeah. And, and let me say everything you just said, you know, so crucial. Yeah. The, we, all those things, even those things that we're talking about with, with the ideologies, with the craziness, that is all part of this template because in the last days of Israel, that's what happened when they, when they went from God, they heart, when you harden yourself, you get worse, you know, and even Jimmy, even people who are not believers are looking and saying, this is crazy, right. or this is demonic. This yeah. makes no sense. What are you doing to the children? You know, what do you, you know? So absolutely. And, and, and wait, <laughs> wait till the next book, The Return of the Gods comes out because, you know, it's the warning about this. Okay. So with, yeah, the, what, the, the Harbinger 2, what I did is, what I was like to do is there's three, three kind of three uh, realms. The first one is the things that I never revealed that were that are started with 9-11 are affecting us now but I, I couldn't put in the harbinger and some things i didn't know until after the harbinger from there the second one is what has happened since have the harbingers stopped or have they kept going they have they have continued to appear that's called that's called the the uh the the uh, manifestations the first one's called the, un the unrevealed and the last one is called the coming last part of the book which is about what's happening now everything from covid to where we're going and is there hope okay so unrevealed i'll give an example of some of these that that i, I never spoke about when judgment begins on a nation the powers of that nation are struck are shaken are are, are your know, god is showing something here it happened in ancient israel well well what happened on 9 11 what was struck the, the two centers of America's power, uh, New York City, financial, economic, Washington, D.C., political and military. Wow. And so what, what was struck, you know, was struck with in Washington, the Pentagon, the symbol of America's military superpower was struck and breached on 9-11. Well, here's the thing. The Pentagon, there's, there's more to it than that. The Pentagon actually was built in the year that America began rising as the superpower the military superpower of the world that was 1941 when it entered the second world war quadrupled its military would emerge as the superpower of the world military all over the world well that year they said we got to make a new building so they started building what we know as the pentagon symbol of that power when but when did the pentagon begin well the pentagon was built on a on a summer morning on the potomac river they broke ground when was it the pentagon was born on 9 11. wow the Pentagon was born on September 11. The rise of America to superpower began on 9/11. So it was struck on the day of its birth. You know, this is what this Jimmy. This goes back to Deuteronomy, where it says, "I will what I have planted, I will." Or, or and then and then all the prophets, "What I have planted, I will uproot. What I have." Built, I will tear down. So on the the foundation is exposed on that day. So 9-11 was the day of the birth. And the, and the warning is that our power, our military power comes from God. But if we turn, if we make war against God, that power is going to come crumbling. We already alluded to it. We're seeing, our, you know, Afghanistan, we're fleeing our enemies. But not only that, and I'm throwing this in, what, the other power was New York City. Well, you know, economic economic power of america is always centered on new york city when did new york city begin when did that begin well it began when henry hudson discovered it that was when did he discover it new york city was born on 9 11. oh my god september 11. <laughs> in fact jimmy on the day of 9 11 there was a ship recreating henry hudson's voyage of discovering the birth of this power was actually coming through on 9 11 through all the wreckage up the hudson river so the the message i mean be, long before we knew 9 11 9 11 was already the date of the birth of america's power the warning is and we're in it now is if we don't turn back to god those powers, America's superpower, the American age is going to crumble. Well, you and, and the thing that you've done since I've been interviewing you all, all these years, those kinds of uh, dates that coincide, that's a that's hundred times those kinds of things have happened. It's the signature of God. It's yeah. just saying this wasn't just an accident. It happened on the exact date in both yes. cases. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, yeah, exactly. And, you know, and that's one thing to throw in too, Jimmy, that, you know, if you're not saved, you know, you got to get saved, you know, yeah. because it's scary without that. But if you are saved, all these things are also telling you not only are we living in critical times, but 
God is on the throne over all of it. So don't panic because your God is on the throne. I'll give you another example of the unrevealed. Uh, there was actually, you know, there's there and speak about appointed. There's a part there's there's a, a scripture that is read every uh, every Sabbath day. I mean, there's an appointed scripture, a section of scripture right. every Sabbath day. It's called the par- the Parsha or the Parasha. And they open it up. The Jewish people open it up and read. It's appointed from ages past. What was the scripture that was appointed uh, for the week that would begin 9-11? Well, it was actually, it was proclaimed all over New York City because New York City has more Jewish people more more than any other place in America. So what was the scripture? It was a scripture in Deuteronomy that was appointed that was that uh, telling what happens to a nation that has known God, been blessed by God, but now turns away from God, what's going to happen to that nation? And there are many things, some things apply just to Israel, but it's amazing because it says one thing is going to happen is an enemy is going to come from a faraway land and is going to strike you at your gate. Well, the oh. gate of America is New York City. Yeah. And then it, it speaks about a rain of dust coming upon the land in the middle of the day. Going, and all that happened on 9-11. There's much more happened on 9 But it says the enemy will come like an eagle swooping on the land. It, the, the Hebrew says swooping down, literally all the planes swooped down, came like an eagle, and the very first plane that began 9-11 had a, had a symbol on it. The symbol was that of an eagle swooping down, the very biblical sign of judgment, and that was in the appointed scripture. This was all proclaimed uh, just days before 9-11 took place in New York City. It's absolutely amazing. And the thing that, the thing that I'm convinced of, because if, if people haven't read, and this is the sequel to The Harbinger, The Harbinger 2, it makes a believer out of you because the this is not just a few little uh, tidbits. This is powerful information that goes back to the scriptures in ancient Israel. This is undeniable. It's undeniable that these things are happening, but it's also undeniable they've also happened on Shemitah years. And you talk about Shemitah yeah. as a seven years. Yeah. 9-11 was a Shemitah year. Yes. And then 2008, 2015, yes. we're now in 2022, another Shemitah year. And yeah. All of those years, there's been a mark. Uh, yes. event or events that show God's judgment. Yeah, well, one thing, the word Shemitah actually means to let fall, and literally you have the towers that represented America's, you know, greatness actually fell. But on top of that, and we, we did a thing, you know, uh, uh, we did a program on the, you and me did a thing on the Shemitah, I'll, I'll say something, one of the specifics are that right after 9-11, that caused the stock market to, to first, to close down. It was closed down for almost a week. Then when it reopened, this is like the day that would have been 9-11. It was reopened. It was pushed to the next the next week. It reopened. You had the greatest point crash in American history. Wow. And when was it? It happened on not just the year of the Shemitah, on the day of the Shemitah, at Lul 29, the very day that is appointed to wipe out financial accounts on that day. And it's the day of the, it's the seventh year. How much was wiped out? Um, you know, it was 7%. All the, there was all these sevens keeps coming up, keep coming up. Well, well, that, that was caused by 9-11. So for that to happen on the exact day, the greatest point crash on the day of the Smita, uh, on the, that had 9-11 had to happen when 9-11 happened. So it, it's amazing. But then when you go now, now what happens when you go seven years later? Seven years later brings you to, to the Shemitah of 2008. 2008, you know, when you get to the close of 2008, you, what happens? The stock market again collapses. It becomes now an even greater point crash. The greatest stock market point crash up to that day happens on the Shemitah, but not to, on the same day, a Lul 29, the exact same day. Uh, both greatest crashes up to that day happen on the exact day, seven biblical years apart to the exact day. How much is wiped out? 7%. How long? In seven hours. I mean, it's just mind boggling. And then, and you know, and you noted it, a lot of people don't know it, that even, you know, size, it can be stronger. Sometimes the speaker can be lesser, but it, it, we're not putting God in the box. He doesn't have to do anything, but be always be aware. That's what this is about. That's what tipping point's about. Be aware of the signs of the times. But the thing is that even in 2015, you had something, you had a collapse in trade. You had collapse. You had the Chinese market wiped out by, by almost half. You had all, you had trillions all over. So it's, it, it is amazing. And as you said, fingerprints of God. And now we are in another Shemitah year. Um, and we, we're not saying what has to happen, but right now it's happening because the, the rise, the seven year rise is now turning around and it, it is beginning to fall. Well, it, it, Harbinger, your first Harbinger was the judgment. God is warning of judgment in his love. 
in his mercy, he's warning of judgment. But there ultimately becomes the fall of the nation. It happened in Israel. God warned them. They didn't turn back, and there was the fall of the nation. And what we're seeing right now, Rabbi, is we're seeing the fall of America. You mentioned earlier about civil war. I believe that we are in a civil war right now, and not, not militarily. Bullets have not been fired in, on widespread anyway. But there is a divide in America today that's not going to be healed. I mean, there are people who are conservative and they're Christian in their, in their thoughts or Judeo-Christian. They're not going to go the way of the, the woke and the progressive. You have progressive people. They're totally 100%. You see right now, uh, today, probably the Supreme Court is going to announce that they've overturned Roe versus Wade. And that mm. is a huge victory for America. And it may go back to the states and there'll be blue states and red states and all that. But at least we have the stench of abortion wiped off of our nation, not the 60 plus million that have been killed, but at least the, that, that re decision has been reversed and the states can make their decision. But we see people protesting the Supreme Court justices' homes and Justice Amy Coney Barrett yesterday, they were carrying little babies, the women that were pro-abortion had blood on them. They had like paint that was like blood on them, carrying these little babies with blood all over them down the streets as if th this is sacred. This is, you can't take away. That's, that's the divide that we have, Rabbi. But those that see from a biblical point of view or a moral point of view, and then those, they're totally bought, they're, they're, they're gone. I mean, and the thing that impresses me, Romans 1 and also 2 Thessalonians 2 says, God gave them over to a depraved mind. And I, yeah. I think we see that today. Yeah, it's it's amazing because, you know, it says, what are those who call evil good and good evil? Right. Um, and you say, as I said, like, even non-believers are saying this is crazy. Right. This is bad. Even liberals are, are being persecuted by the new the new crazy woke guard. Right. Uh, because they're not they're not they still believe in free speech you know crazy uh, it's crazy <laughs> you know and, and the thing is one of the things when you look at that scripture and and you, when you look at and that's again one of the reasons why i i knew i had to write i had to write this the harbinger too because of where this is going uh that one of the things is that when you look at um the scripture that says woe to those who call evil good and good evil notice the the first part of it is evil good and then the second part is good evil well evil good those who call evil good that was the first part of america's fall it's like saying hey you know what what was evil what was saying it's not really sin do your own thing hey, they, hey anything goes be tolerant it's okay but we'll celebrate it even okay that's the first part but the second part is those they will call good evil and wow. so the very same civilization that calls evil good is going to call, give it time, it's going to start calling good evil. And that's where you are now, where we have cancel culture. That's where you're trying to cancel out everything that's good, cancel out the people of God, cancel out the word of God. You can't say anything. That's where we punish the people of God. Well, that's what that's where it was in the last days of Israel. Yeah. When you in this template that you don't notice something, when judgment came to ancient Israel or Judah, the, there was there was a prophet in prison. You know, Jeremiah was in prison. They were trying to cancel him out. So we are in that, yes, there is a great divide. I mean, on one hand, we can be thankful that there is a divide, that it's not all it's not all evil. That's you right. still have those, but we have to pray because the 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 children are what they're they are the ones who are most subject to this, and that's the next generation. So we have to pray for that. Uh, we you know, and one, another thing, you know, we talk about abortion. This is also linked to the mystery of where we are now. Even you know, you know, there is so much to this. Let, let me, if it's okay, Jimmy, let me kind of bring it yeah. to here, um, and that is that you know we talked about. Uh, well, let me, let me tell you two things. One is when you look at Isaiah nine ten, that's the beginning, but that doesn't that's not the end of that of that chapter or the section. It goes on to say this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. The nation's going to be divided. The nation's going to be judged. Well, do you know, Jimmy, that I and I didn't know this when I wrote the Harbinger, but on the the day, the morning of nine eleven, they all across America, people were opening up their Bibles to the Harbinger scripture, Isaiah nine ten, before it happened. And the reason is because if you have, if you look at the one year Bible and they have a, they have a scripture for every day of the week or every day of the year, you open up the one year Bible. And if you open up to the Harbinger scripture, Isaiah 9 10, that talks about the attack on the land, the beginning of judgment, enemy attack. You'll see a date on the top. The date is September 11th. Good grief. It was all there. And that the one year Bible came out in the 1980s. And so it was all there every year. They were open, believers were opening up their Bible on 9-11 to read about the attack on the land. So, you know, the Bible says, you know, God says that the, the word will fall upon the land. So he's warned. It's there. 
But then what what happens to where we are now? Well, one thing is this, you know, it's actually if you if Jimmy in the original book, The Harbinger, I asked the question and then I answered The Harbinger, too. And actually, it's 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 happening. And that is it's how long is it between that first warning strike and when the greater shakings come on the land? Well, and again, we don't put God in a box. God doesn't have to do anything. But when when the answer is when Jerusalem was struck by the Babylonians, it was 605 B.C. The greater shakings come in 586 B.C. How long is that? That's a 19 year period. 19 years linked to judgment. It says 19th year, Nebuchadnezzar return. 19th year, 19th year, 19th year. So, so. 9-11 9-11 happened when? 2001. So when is the 19th year? And could that be the year when shakings begin, greater shakings? Go? Well, the 19th year is the year 2020. That is the year that the shakings, the greater shakings, the plague began, begins with a plague, comes on the left. What is the name of that plague? The plague's name is COVID and then the number 19. And, and Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, even said that in the 19th year of this judgment, said one of the judgments that's coming on is a plague that's coming on the land. And the thing is, there is so much to this. This is, this is I think I believe it's the largest chapter in the Harbinger 2 was called the plague, and it totally actually links to an ancient law of judgment that is linked to what the nation did to its babies. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Oh, when, when it struck, the day it struck America, the place it struck, the year it struck is all there. Well, you've documented so well in both of your books, but in, again in Harbinger too, this is a this is a God thing. It, this, God is all over this, and for people that are scoffing and people that are hard-hearted and just kind of cynical about things of God, this is a time to wake up and get your li- relationship right with God because God is all over this in an unmistakable way. What would you say, Rabbi, to people watching right now and they're they're trying they they don't know what to do, they don't know how to live their lives, or maybe they're afraid of the things that are happening in the world. Yeah, well, if you are not born again, you 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 need to be, because I'll tell you, you know, first of all, when you're looking at this, and again, I'm saying this, that even, you know, I mean, we, Jimmy and I are talking about, we're talking about um, the, you know, how exact this is. There's so much, and we're just scratching the surface right now. There's so much that's behind all of it, but even people who don't know that are saying, what is going on? If, if you're not, uh, if you're not saved, number one, you say, well, how, how can I be safe? How can I be safe? Well, the word in Hebrew for safety is Yeshua. <laughs> you know, wow. Yeshua is also the name of Jesus. So that the first thing is that if you're not in him, you, you want to be safe, you got to get in him. So if you're not born again, get in him. If there's anything in your life that's not right, get it right. You know, this is the time. The time is late. Whatever should not be in your life, get it out. Whatever should be in your life, this is the time, even today, to say get it in. Uh, so, you, so that's the first thing. If you are saved, if you are a believer, listen, you are not to fear you know that that's the first thing because what we are saying here is that if all these things converging on the exact date the exact time that is saying that your god is on the throne you know this is not this is not chaos it looks like chaos because sin makes things look like chaos and to the world that's an evil that creates chaos but for us it's a different story the bible said you know when i when i first came i don't know jimmy when you first came to the lord but when i first came to the lord you know it was talking there was more talk about it in times actually then um it's, it's but it's coming true now they were saying there's going to be persecution there's going to be men will grow evil well look at that's where we were then we're seeing it now oh, yeah. so, so 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 the thing is that one of the mysteries actually i i talked about um in the or Oracle is that the end of the age is it, it kind of goes back to the beginning. The beginning of the age, two thousand years ago, you had Israel in the world. You got Israel in the world again. Yeah. The Jewish people have returned. Well, but also the world was anti-Christian and pagan and godless. Well, that is where it's going. The culture is going that way now too. It's going. Everything's going back to the beginning. Well, so where do we have to go? If that means the church, you, the people of God, us, we have to go back to where we were at the beginning of the year, beginning of the of the age, the Hebrew year, and we were in the book of Acts. That's right. It is time to go back to the book of Acts. Because you know what? If it's again, if it's darker, the lights have to get brighter. And this is the day that that brought the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter, all the great the Holy Spirit moving. So, you know, the end times is not just darkness. It says the gospel will be preached to all nations, and I will pour my spirit on all flesh. So to me, Jimmy, these are the most exciting times. You know, you know, when you watch a movie, you know, what's the most exciting part? The last 15 minutes. Well, we're well, we're in the last 15 minutes. 
is. God chose you to be here. You know, he chose you to be born. So don't, don't for the end times. So don't fear it. If he chose you, he appointed you, he will anoint you and he will empower you. This is the most exciting time. But the, 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 the challenge for each of us is we have to live as never before. We got to have to be That's uncompromised. Right. We have to be totally the lights that we're called to be. So whatever you have to do, even do it today. And listen, we're all, we're all, we're all in the same boat. We got to do it. Stand and God is going to lift you up. And you're going to have the, you're going to live the greatest possible life because these are times for the great to rise. That's fantastic. I just want to encourage everyone get the harbinger to Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. It's called the return, the encouragement. First of all, just the, the clarity of what you've heard him say on this program of this is unmistakably God beginning in 2001, continuing until now. God is judging America. There's no doubt about that. But that doesn't mean it's fatalistic. There's hope. And I just encourage you to get this book. It gives me such encouragement every time I read uh, one of your books. And uh, Rabbi, you're going to join us September 17th here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex at Fellowship Church. You're going to be speaking at our Tipping Point Com Prophecy Conference. We're so glad you're going to be there. Anything you want to say about that? Yeah, I really look forward to it. I've, ne I've never, we've, I've ne we've never done that together, and I, I really look forward to it. Um, I believe, you know, this is going to be. I, I believe it's going to be a critical time. I mean, I mean, I mean, and again, we're not saying what has to be, but I believe, I believe you chose that time um, because of the Lord. It's going to be a critical time. Um, at that time, I'm also coming out as you know with with the most explosive book I ever did, which is the Return of the Gods, um, and the Gods <laughs> plural. Um, and at the same time, it's also the Shemitah period. It's also it's also this autumn period, very prophetic. Uh, it's a time of the holy days. I believe it's going to be exciting. Um, I believe it's going to be very important to be there, very, very powerful. Um, and I'm going to be praying. There's so much to share, but I'm going to be praying, you know, what God, what do you have for that moment? So I believe it's going to be a tremendous time. I encourage all of you. Well, if, if someone wants more information about the conference, it's conference.endtimes.com. You can sign up there. Rabbi, thank you so much for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you in September. Amen. God bless you, Jimmy. God bless you. Thanks for watching our weekly Tipping Point show. If you enjoyed this show, leave a comment below and like and subscribe to our channel.